I alluded to this on Wednesday, and I think it's the most important thing about this game. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, uh, I'm not going to say he's washed up, but he's not the quarterback we've seen over the last two years. A big part of that is because Devontae Adams isn't there anymore, okay? Right. I think we all agree on that. Right. A.J. Dillon, Aaron Jones, that backfield, getting involved in not only the run game, but in the passing game, limiting the backs, in my opinion, is the game plan. I want to know from you, but to me, you slow down these backs. You make Aaron drop back and force himself to throw to Randall Cobb, who's his number one option in terms of trust. Yes. And then a Christian Watson who's been dealing with injuries the last few weeks. And then an Alan Lazard who's been inconsistent. And a Robert Tunyon. I like your chances there. But if you're going to let the Packers run the ball, get Aaron in play action sets. Get Aaron rolling out. That's where they're going to beat you. And you saw them do it against Minnesota, Jeff. Yep. And you hit on it, Adam. Uh, when the Packers run the ball 50% of the time, they are 5-0. and that is, that is the st- statistic. And on top of that, it's the ability to set up play action, to your point. If they can get Aaron Rodgers in situations where he's most comfortable, which is making the defense stay on their toes, right? He doesn't have a Devontae Adams. He has Christian Watson, who's emerged, and he had a stretch where he had like five, six, seven touchdowns in like four games. But more than that, it's the run game. That's where all the danger should should uh, alert the Detroit Lions. And they've done a good job. I mean, the last handful of weeks during this winning stretch, they've gave up a ton of yards against Carolina, and they've had a, a game or two where they've struggled, but for the most part, this defensive front, has been great against the run. I mean, even go back to uh, the Bears last week or go back to the Giants when Lee McNeil had that monster game. They have talent, and I think they have the ability to at least slow down the run. And if they could do that and force Aaron Rodgers to play in some passing sets here, you can get James Houston, Aiden Hutchinson running wild, and that's what you want. So that's the, that's the matchup I'm looking for, is the Lions front seven against the Packers offensive line in their run game, because that's, that's what you have to watch. If the Packers could run the ball effectively and control the time and, and not allow, you know, not put Aaron Rodgers in positions where he could turn the ball over. Because might I add, at Ford Field early in the year when you beat the Packers, they didn't run the ball. Aaron Rodgers led their team in rushing yards, which forced them to throw the ball downfield. Aaron Rodgers put the ball in harm's way at three interceptions. And that's already three interceptions. I think he has 11 on the year. So you forced one-fourth of what his total interceptions are in that one game. But still... Don't allow Aaron Rodgers to be comfortable because these young receivers, Randall Cobb isn't what he used to be. Romeo Dobbs has been, he's been all right. Christian Watson's the big one. So if they can slow down the run, the secondary, their job becomes a little more easier. And it's up to the secondary to stay intact because it's a big test for them as well. Um, You're going to have Jerry Jacobs, Mike Hughes, and Jeff Okuda probably out there. Kirby Joseph's going to have to have another big game, even on the road. So lots to look forward to, but it starts up front, Adam. I'm with you with that front seven. That's going to be the key to the game. And then you look at the Lions. Honestly, it applies to the Lions, too. You're going to want to get the run game going. And if anything, the Packers' defense is much better than Lions' defense, especially over the last three, four weeks. So I'm looking at this matchup, and I'm asking myself, well, where are the Lions going to hurt themselves, potentially? Well, you don't want Jared Goff dropping back as often as you saw him drop back against Carolina. Now, he played well, but that game was over and, and done with. That was really just Carolina running out the clock. But... At the end of the day, you don't want Jared Goff coming out and having to make third and 10, third and 12 throws uh, to start the game. You don't want multiple three and outs. You want to get Jamal going. DeAndre Swift, can we talk about him? His performance on Sunday is what everybody holds on to. It is those performances, those moments, running the ball, catching out of the backfield. That's why people are so infatuated with DeAndre Swift because when he's right, and Flannel Sam's called this before the year started. When he's right, he's one of the better backs in the NFL, mm-hmm. right? And he gave you a glimpse of it against Chicago. Can he do that in Lambeau Field on the road? Harsh conditions, going to be cold. When you hit the ground, it's going to hurt. I don't know. But I. this really is a. It's almost an even game in terms of both teams know what they have to do. Yeah, it, and you know what both teams want to do. They want to establish the run and put their quarterbacks in play-action sets. Because if both teams mm-hmm. are able to do that, both teams offensively will find more success against the opposing defenses. Yeah, and you just laid out the plan for the Detroit Lions and how they want to get their offense going. That's the same exact thing for the Packers. The big thing 
is going to be the inexperience for a lot of the Lions. They're, they're impactful players. They're rookie players. They're, they're second-year players. That's what I'm looking at. It's a big test for these guys, and it's a good measuring stick to see where they are right now. If these guys can show up at Lambeau and a James Houston, Aiden Hutchinson, Josh Pascal, Aline McNeil, uh, Malcolm Rodriguez, so on and so forth, Kirby Joseph, if these guys can play well at Lambeau, man, that's got to give you hope for the future because you can argue they're, they're way ahead of schedule. If they aren't ready to play, the season's still a, a success, but now you know, hey, these guys still have some work to do. It's going to be a good measuring stick to see where this team has progressed and to see where they're going to. So a lot, lot on the line on Sunday, but this is what you want. You want to play in these, in now not even meaningful December games, meaningful January games where you can make the playoffs depending on what happens with Seattle. So I, it's just, as a Lions, someone who talks about the Lions and covers the Lions, this is everything I wanted and more. A chance to make the playoffs, last game of the season, in Lambeau. It, it's, it, I mean, you couldn't wrote a script better than this. You just couldn't. So it's going to be exciting, Adam. It really is. All right. I have a question for you. No, it doesn't involve bagels. Jared Goff has been so good this season. And Carolina was his best game on the road statistically. We can't argue that. How confident are you in Jared Goff going into Lambeau? I'm fine. Because I, you know this game is not just going to come down to, oh, we're going to have a script and it's going to work out perfectly. That never works. No. Very rarely are you able to execute a script minute one and minute 60. just doesn't happen. Things happen. False starts, holdings, penalties happen. Right? Your player runs the wrong route. Things happen. How confident are you in Goff on the road? to pull this one out for you. If you look at Goff, out of all, uh, any player on the Detroit Lions, he has the most experience in playing in these type of games, right? He's played in NFC Championship games. He's played in a Super Bowl. He's played in multiple playoff games. He's played in, in rivalry games. Like, he, Jared Goff is not really a concern of mine. It's more the Lions in total. Because if you go back to Carolina, yeah, the offense, they had to play keep up and they had to come from behind. But Jared Goff still played well. He had three touchdowns. The offensive line didn't play well. The running game, you couldn't get going. Like, there's other things with the Lions I'm more concerned about than just Jared Goff. I think people like to point the finger at Jared Goff because he is the quarterback. He touches the ball every time. But to say you're concerned about him going into, into Ford Field, or excuse me, uh, Lambeau Field, I just wouldn't go that far. But you know what's fair to say is, th you know what, you know the last time he threw an interception was? Green Bay at Ford Field, right? Yes, you're right. And that was to Jair Alexander. So if you're concerned about the turnovers, that's real because this is a good defense. I mean, this Packers defense has forced a ton of turnovers over this four-game winning streak. That's been the big thing about their defense, turning the ball this over. This game is all that about I would be concerned how do you about, get up. But not Jared Goff's overall play, no. This game to me is how often are you going to be able to get up after you get knocked down? Yes. Because the Packers are going to punch the Lions a ton, and Lions are going to punch the Packers a ton too. I think this is a closer game than people are making it out to be. I don't think the Packers are just going to waltz in and, and beat down the Lions. I, I don't believe that at all. The Lions have a more than capable offense of dealing with this Packers defense. Now, what version of the Lions defense shows up? That's the wild card here, right? Are you going to get a Lions defense that gives up 30, 31 points? I'm not liking your chances. But if you can hold Aaron Rodgers to 23, 24 points, Jeff, yep. I think you walk away 26, 24, 27, 24, 24, 23. I think you can pull that number out. And, and the Packers offense isn't an offense. Like last week, they scored 40 against Minnesota. That was a pick six special, special teams. teams. Right. It's not the offense you, you're worried about. I'm more worried about Nixon, by Keyshawn, the way. Keyshawn Nixon? He, he's a bad man. I think he has three or four... Uh, breakaways for 50 plus yards on special teams. The Packers have always had bad special teams the last handful of years because of, well, they hired Rich uh, Rich out of uh, Las Vegas, Passaccia. the interim Yep, last year, and he's a, he's a hell of a coach. But on top of that, Nixon, that's a bad man. And, and again, Packers are clicking on all three phases. That's where the fear with the Packers are, not Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers, over the last five games, six touchdowns, four interceptions. Like, this, this Aaron Rodgers, listen, he's still a bad man, but he's not really the, the, you know, the, the forefront of what you should be worried about. It's more of everything else. More so, it's, for me, it's the defense. Well, look, the, 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 Packers, the Packers over the last four weeks, okay, they're riding a four-game win streak. 28-19 against the Bears, 24-12 against the Rams, 26-20 against the Dolphins, 41-17 against the Vikings. Yeah. 
And they're the, hot. But those games, those quarterbacks, talk about seeing ghosts. Tua, I mean, he and was kind of concussed. He had three picks. But, but Kirk, seeing ghosts. Like, this defense has been just everywhere. suffocating everybody. And you know what? I got to give credit to Jair Alexander to play that position in the NFL. Yes. And to call out arguably the best receiver in the NFL leading up to the game and saying that was a fluke. That's not going to happen. Watch this. And for you to go out and basically shut down Justin Jefferson, to me, that was that's what a number one corner is, guys. That's what it looks like. That's what it sounds like. Now, he took Jefferson out of the game. Now, did the Vikings take themselves out of that game with a lot of the dumb stuff they did? Sure. But this is a Packers team that's riding a hot, a hot, hot streak right now. They look good. They look dangerous. And if I'm honest... Let's let's assume Seattle wins. Or excuse me, I apologize. Let's assume Seattle loses, okay? If Seattle loses, and who would lock up the two seed? The Niners or the Vikings? Right now the Niners, correct? Let's say for some reason it's Philly or the Niners with the two seed and Philly collapsed at the end, okay? Yep. Who would you rather play? If you're Philly or the Niners, would you rather play the Detroit Lions? Yep. Or the Green Bay Packers. Oh, yeah. It'd be Green. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm Green, asking. Maybe I'm Green asking. Bay. Cause, cause, but then they have that great defense. It's, it's really pick and choose. Would you rather face the Packers defense or the Lions offense? But the Lions do have some young guys up front defensively that are dangerous. So that's, a, that's actually an interesting question. I don't know. It depends on the matchup, I guess. If you have a team that is heavy pass, has a really good offense, maybe you want to face the Lions, but... Do you want to deal with the Lions offense is the question. That's the question. That's a real question. <laughs>